Hey, this is the great Johanna speaking for my podcast. I'm doing this live. I came across this article from five years ago, and uh, it's about how the tech's tech industry's richest people plan to save themselves after the apocalypse. And I missed this five years ago because it's very interesting. You've all heard about the billionaires in their bunkers, right? They're building their underground bunkers to save themselves in case of a nuclear apocalypse. But of course, what they are really afraid of isn't atomic bombs. They are really afraid of hungry people coming after them. So they're trying to set themselves up to protect themselves and defend themselves in a way uh, that they can still maintain control over people. And this is where it becomes very interesting because um, they reason, the billionaires reason that in case of a global collapse, which they call the event, an, ap an apocalyptic event, they assume that their money won't be worth anything anymore. Uh, crypto won't work. Maybe electricity won't even work. Right. And so they're trying to figure out a way, like, how do I get people to stay loyal to me and to work for me as though I'm the pharaoh or the king of an empire, right? And they reason that there's no way to do it. So they actually discuss, for example, uh, putting collars around people's necks with explosives or something to keep them in line or to somehow uh, put uh, uh, locks on the food supply so that only they can eat. But then I realized something. I realized that the very notion of building underground bunkers is the wrong idea for billionaires. If I were a billionaire and I wanted to survive some kind of apocalypse, I would perhaps have bunkers for storage to put stuff in there if I want to keep it, right? What I would not do, however, is live there. I would not live in the bunkers because uh, I immediately saw that what they're really doing is they're rebuilding the Valley of the Kings in ancient Egypt, where the pharaohs, uh, and the other nobility, the rich people of ancient Egypt, built their own underground tombs, right? And also the pyramids. But they didn't live in there. They didn't live in their tombs. They were buried there. In order to survive an apocalypse where humans are likely going to starve and get hungry, uh, food becomes your currency. And, and the way to survive is to have a food-producing estate. That means you have fertile land, enough of it to feed your own workers and your security forces. And that is how you will survive because the security forces and the workers, they're not going to set fire to the crops that they have to eat. They're not going to kill the cattle they have to rely on for their, for their food. Uh, and so I, I immediately noticed that all these tech billionaires trying to build underground bunkers are doing it wrong. They are only looking at what they can hide underground as a way of escaping the collapse when they should be planning for their above ground presence. You're not going to live in the bunker. You're going to have to have, to have an above ground presence, a food producing estate that produces enough food. But there's some problems here. The real threat is not atomic bombs. The real threat is hungry people living in the big cities worldwide. We have cities with millions and tens of millions and some, place, some places even 50 millions of people living in a city. When they go hungry, they will all leave the cities with their cars, with the fuel left in their cars or the charge left in their batteries. They're going to try to escape those cities looking for places to eat. So you need to place your food producing estate out of reach of the populations of the big cities. Uh, say they have a full charge, they can drive, I don't know, a, a full charge on a Tesla, 200 miles, and maybe a full gas tank gets them, what, I don't know, 500 miles or so, something like it. So you need to stay far away from the big cities, and uh, I immediately had to think of Machu Picchu. In Latin America, there was this uh, colony high up in the mountains, Machu Picchu, where apparently some very wealthy people were able to stake it out and survive while the Spanish conquistadors were conquering Latin America. Uh, this is also because uh, of all the empires you've ever heard of, they were all valley empires. The empires like the Roman Empire, like uh, ancient Greece or whatever, British Empire, they do not rule the mountaintops. They usually rule the valleys. Even in a modern country like Norway, when you go up into the fjords, you will find their farmers, they put up a little sign that says, please pay us one dollar or one euro to use this road because the farmers built their own road. Uh, what it means, what I'm trying to say is that the Norwegian 
uh, national authority doesn't actually have the capacity to police or enforce laws up in the Fuhrers. And that's how it's always been. Empires cannot afford to have a presence up in the mountains. They, have, they can have an occasional outpost, but you can't, you can't police it. So it would be very, very smart for billionaires looking to survive the, uh, the, what they call the event, the apocalypse, is to start building your food-producing estates higher up in the mountains and far away from population centers. Uh, but in a way that you can do that with minimal input agriculture or zero input agriculture, you're going to have to think about what crops can you use, what animals can you bring along, cows, for example, goats, mountain goats, whatever, anything that you can get food of, but in a way where your input into that system is absolutely minimal, so that you can stake it out there with 100 people or maybe 1,000 people, depending on the conditions, right? So you'll have your servants, you'll have your, um, your security forces and your cattle and your farmers and your peasants and so on and so forth. And in, it should be possible to set this up in several places around the world, such as Machu Picchu. That's why they, why they actually did that in the past, so you know it's possible. But the idea of hiding in bunkers is just stupid. Um, and for this reason, of course, I'm going to read some from this article uh, by the author named Douglas Rushkoff. He wrote a book. Uh, let me flip through it for a moment here. Survival of the Richest, uh, Escape Fantasies of the Tech Billionaires. I'll get to that later because there's three articles. This one is from five years ago, and then there's another one, this one, from two years ago or one year ago or so, and then his blog articles. I'm going to go have a look at those. Um, uh, these tech billionaires, they fear that with the collapse of the financial system, I mean, they won't have money to buy people's loyalty. They can't, you can't get people to work for you if you can't have nothing to pay them. And that's why I said uh, food will be the currency of the future. It's going to be so simple. Food, of course. Of course, you will feed people, and that's why they'll be loyal. But um, the tech billionaires, they reason that, well, if we, you know, this is interesting, by the way. Um, our entire global financial system relies on this fact that a small families of people control the money printers the printing presses for money they uh, nowadays of course it's a computer right they just type in type in a couple of numbers to create money from nothing i did a whole study about this like 10 years ago when i got into bitcoin is that um money is created from nothing central banks create a million dollars from nothing they credit it to a commercial bank but the commercial bank has to pay real interest real dollars to the central bank that gave them the loan so if you own a central bank Basically, you are God, uh, as good as it gets. If you own a central bank, and many central banks are indeed privately owned, make no mistake, that's the whole point. Uh, the true elites of our world are called quantillionaires. Not billionaires, not millionaires, trillionaires, no. Quantillionaires. Quantillionaires means uh, infinite money. They control the money supply. They are the ones who have access to the computers where they create money from nothing. These are the real elites like Rothschild or Rockefeller and so on, such types of people who don't need to work for money. You think money is something, we think money is something we have to work for, right? No, they don't work for money. They create money from nothing because they know that the majority of people are suckers enough to actually work for this money. And so these billionaire elites, like the top of the top, they fear that when the financial system collapses, people will lose trust in the dollar. People will no longer accept the euro or the UN or the renminbi or whatever you have, the golden dinars. Um, yeah, you may switch to gold and uh, silver for trade, right? But the thing is, you need to have a lot of it in order to have that kind of power, right? And so, in case of a financial collapse, there's nothing you can really have at hand to pay people to do things, right? All right? And that's why I think food is going to be currency. In order to survive the apocalypse, you need uh, a, an above-ground food producing a state more than an underground bunker where you think you're going to hide in a bunker and then they stuff the air vents and they block your exits it's a burial see that's what happened to the pharaohs in ancient egypt they buried themselves in the in the valley of the kings they didn't live in their tombs they were buried there underground bunkers are for burials you do not live there um so let me go through this article over here uh Maybe I can increase the size of it for you as well so you get to see it a little better. Well, I'll read it to you anyway, so it doesn't matter. Uh, all right, I'm going to click through this. 
Uh, let me see. Um, so finally, I'm going to read you. Finally, the CEO of a brokerage house explained that he had nearly completed building his own underground bunker system and asked, how do I maintain authority over my security forces after the event, after the collapse of, uh, of the civilization? Okay, so this question occupied us for the rest of the hour. Uh, they knew that armed guards would be required to protect their underground compounds from angry mobs. Duh, because guys like me would stuff the air vents with, <laughs> with concrete or something to choke these motherfuckers, right? All right, and then, but how would they pay the guards once money was worthless? Well, that's why I told you, you pay them food. In a, you need a food producing estate. So what would stop the guards from choosing their own leader? All right, and the billionaires considered using special combination locks on the food supply that only they knew. Yeah, that, no, <laughs> they'll, just, they'll just kill you. So, or making guards wear disciplinary collars. Like, see, they, they see, they think of people as animals. The, two, the super rich people have very low empathy for others. That means they, uh, they're they like psychopaths, but with money. And so they couldn't care less about you. They see people as cattle. They see people as the dust underneath their feet. They will collar you like a dog. Like in that movie, The Running Man, where Arnold tries to escape this prison colony. And some guy, they're, they're wearing these collars with explosives. And if you, uh, if you escape the perimeter, the collar basically blows your head off. You know, your head explodes that's what they're thinking of. That's what these so-called elite billionaires are actually thinking of doing to keep their security forces in check. Excuse me, but there's there's slavery and there's slavery with an explosive collar. You know, it only takes one of them to give you a nice, strong hug while they detonate the collar, taking you out with them, right? So that is just suicide. You can't, you can't possibly treat people that way. Uh, just like I said, the smarter solution I already gave it to you. Find high ground away from the big cities. Start your own zero input or minimal input agricultural um, habitat ecosystem. Uh, high up in the mountains, likely, where you still have grass, so you can have mountain goats and other animals that can graze there, right? That you can produce, uh, and that way you would have a food producing estate with a couple of with your servants and peasants and your security staff. That's probably your very best option in case of an apocalypse. All right, and so the billionaires considered using. Oh, I already read that. So, and here we go. This is what this was an interesting topic, or maybe they could build robots to serve as guards and workers if that technology could be developed in time. Ah, do you see now? Do you see now why the super rich and the tech elites? Why they all want these robots? Why they love the idea of human-like robots? Because robots can be programmed with loyalty, whereas people would revolt against the masters. But still, this is probably not a solution. Likely not, because those robots will suck so much electric ele electricity. Where are you going to get that in case of an, of an apocalypse? The whole idea of a, of a global meltdown is that the energy supplies will crash. You will have energy shortages, an energy infarct, like a heart infarct or a heart catastrophe right a heart breakdown uh there won't be energy to charge your batteries and your robots especially not robots that will suck uh so much energy and where are you going to get that you know these things need to be plugged in the whole time right i mean a tesla car nowadays has like i don't know 500 pound battery inside of it uh the robots can have maybe 30 pound four fifty 50 pound batteries carrying in their in their bodies or something right how, they don't last more than 30 minutes, man, uh, with present technology. It's a bit nonsense to think that robots are going to take over the world. You don't have the electric supply for it. Again, it would be so much more, so much easier for you to just set up a new a food producing estate, a farm, and then keep your people happy by feeding them, you know? No, they want to go for robots because robots can be programmed with loyalty so that people will obey the billionaire pharaohs. The only thing that I am certain of is that those pharaohs, those billionaire pharaohs, they will be buried in their bunkers. I guarantee it. Like the Valley of the Kings in ancient Egypt, we're going to bury them. They're not going to come out of there alive. If they enter those bunkers, they will never leave, period. You know, so for us, from the people's perspective is, uh, the majority of our people are going to starve in such a collapse because the the big cities can't produce food. You need to find the food elsewhere. But without 
without cheap energy for transportation, you simply cannot bring the produce from the fields to the cities anymore. The, the reason why a city like New York City can even exist at all is because every day you have trains and buses and trucks, food trucks, busing in, training and flying in food into the city's supermarkets so that people can live. But, you know, without cheap energy for that transportation effort, and think of also of the trucks supplying the trains in the countryside, right? So you have trucks in the countryside that move the food to the train stations and the train stations move it to New York City. And that's why people eat every day in New York City without that cheap energy, without the ability to have trains, there could not be big cities. In fact, in the early 1900s or so, when they started building these metro systems and train systems, that is when all of a sudden cities start expanding because up until then you needed to be able to supply cities with horses on, with horses and carts. And only because then you switched to cars and trains, all of a sudden cities could grow bigger. Imagine now what we have in the world is a, is a civilizational stack that is so layered. It has so many layers that are required to keep the whole thing functioning. If any one of those layers falters, the whole damn thing collapses. And I think it's very reasonable to accept um, that in our own lifetime, you know, a guy my age is going to see the end. Basically, we, we will see the economic energy infarct, the energy collapse of this world that puts an end to cheap transportation, meaning the cities can no longer be supplied with food. The people will go hungry. They will try to find food in the countryside, won't find it there, or they'll strip, they'll strip the countryside dry, countryside dry in, in matters of a month or so. At most, it'll be all gone. Uh, and that's it. That's the end of it. And if you want to survive, you better have uh, an off-the-grid uh, farm far away, far away enough from the city so that no one can find you, all right? Uh, and so, here, let me, let me read some more from the article. Uh, so these tech billionaires, they have less of a vision for the wholesale migration of humanity to a new state of being than a quest to transcend all that is human. The body, interdependence, compassion, vulnerability, complexity, and so on. Basically, this mo movement for transhumanism, again, it mimics what the ancient Egyptian pharaohs were doing. They, through their rituals, their balming of their bodies and so on, they hoped to enter heaven. Heaven was a new concept in those days. It wasn't democratic yet. Only pharaohs could go to heaven and basically also potentially be reborn again as another pharaoh, right? And so these tech billionaires and the rich people in the Western world today, they are trying to do exactly the same thing that every other rich and powerful, powerful person has always been trying to do. They're seeking eternal life because they have all this money and all this technology and all these people who obey them. But why can't they live forever? There's a story of an, uh, of, an, uh, of an ancient Chinese emperor who tried to find eternal life by drinking uh, lead. <laughs> Guess what happened? He died. <laughs> uh, same with the pharaohs. You can have your balming and so on. But of course, we find their mummies great. Their bodies have been preserved, but their minds and spirits have not. Those have, have actually died. Now they're thinking, well, what if we build a computer where we can upload our minds into the computer? I think Ray Kurzweil is working on this with Google or has been for a few years ago. Right, great idea. But then when you transfer your consciousness from your body to the computer, do you really experience the transfer, the migration, so that you feel as though it's a continuation of your life? Or is it merely a copy of you and while your real you just dies? Or if you've seen the movie The Apprentice, what if you make copies of your, say you are able to transfer your brain into a computer, but then you can be deleted <laughs> and you can be, you can be programmed to think differently. You can have all sorts of programmatic restrictions in your own thought processes. If, because who's, who's going to run the computer? You won't be there to run it. Someone else is going to run the computer for you. So, and also you can make copies of yourself. You can have a dozen copies or thousands of copies of your own mind out there right? What's that going to be like? You, you would be like a virus. People will shut you down. So no, no, no. I personally don't think that we need to enter the, the metaverse, the virtual world. Oh, by the way, is that why the billionaires are building their metaverse? Is that why they love the idea so much of virtual reality? Thinking that they can transcend their human bodies and at least their minds can live on forever and they can keep stacking sats and accumulating money and be the richest person in the universe or something. 
No, no, no. Like I said, there's a real world energy shortage coming for all of us. There's not going to be a metaverse that runs on electricity. It's not going to exist. I don't believe that. Uh, right here, he's, they speak of the reduction of human beings uh, as nothing but information processing objects. Yes, that is exactly how the elite look at you. Like in the past, pharaohs would have considered you the dust underneath their feet. And other people treat you as cattle or dogs or whatever, or bugs and insects, right? The masses, the hoi polloi, right? Uh, but nowadays, the tech billionaires, they see you as just as a, pro as a transistor or something, like a processor or something, right? At most, right? Well, we will just program the people with the behaviors uh, to make people do what we want them to do, right? You know, that's just so nuts, you know? Uh, yeah, I see people commenting. I love the comments, but I'm going to do my story first and then I will see if I can uh, go through your comments and have some uh, have some uh, interaction with you as usual. Um, so, all right. So the Internet that was supposed to be open for everybody, supposed to elevate humanity, it's just going to be used by the tech billionaires to try to find eternal life. And and just like the ancient Egyptians and the ancient pharaohs and, and, the, and the Chinese emperors, it ain't going to happen, bro. You just got this wrong. If you want to live forever, perhaps uh, live in a way where you know your soul may be reincarnated. Maybe reincarnation can be a real thing. Mm. You know, but the idea that you, you are going to be a god because you had a lot of you had the most money in this lifetime. I think you're going to hell. <laughs> I don't think billionaires stand a chance of being accepted into the into the realm of gods no <laughs> no way <laughs> same with the pharaohs they probably got it wrong like why would these pharaohs who who basically exploited their people to the max why would they be the ones to be allowed to transcend and become gods wouldn't you think it would be a very different kind of person to truly be allowed to be a god you know if you believe in that stuff i know it can be offensive sometimes but i always keep every option open i look at what is all possible just to as a, to entertain myself and you about the possibilities, you know. <clears throat> uh, let me go through this article. I didn't read all of it, so I'm going to read it while I, while I'm uh, talking to you about it. Okay, so uh, orthodoxy movies, television. Okay, now. So here we get tech billionaires launching electric cars into space, as if this symbolizes something more than one billionaire's capacity for corporate promotion. By the way, the Tesla thing, the, the Tesla car that you thought that he shot up into space, it was actually a small miniature car. It wasn't an actual car, by the way. It was, it was fake. Uh, all right, so we see that the tech billionaires think they can use technology now to escape humanity. That's why they love robots, because they can program robots to be loyal and obedient. And I... And that's just not going to work because the whole point of a collapse means there's going to be an energy collapse. You won't have robots. Your robots, your your solar panels only last for 20 years and then they break down. The, um, the arms of a windmill that generates electricity from wind, they only last about 15 to 20 years and then basically you could scrap the whole thing. And that means when society collapses, yes, if you have solar panels and windmills, you will survive with electricity for another 20 years at most things will break down eventually and you will have to learn to live without electricity and that's why i keep saying the true solution is have fertile land off the grid minimal input agriculture a food producing estate so you can feed your people your family or your workers your security staff that's the way to do it that's how it's always been done you know why do we have so many castles in europe because something like this must have happened before around the 10th to 15th century or so well, we had a lot of rich people in Europe who were building these castles, but they, those were food producing estates so they could actually survive wars, right? And they did. They did survive wars. That's how it works, you know. Here's another article about the same thing by the same author, uh, Douglas Rushkoff, who wrote, sorry, who wrote this book called uh, Survival of the Richest, Escape Fantasies of the Tech Billionaires. Uh, tech billionaires are buying up luxurious bunkers and hiring military security to survive a societal collapse they helped create. But like everything they do, it has unintended consequences. This is a bit of a long article. I didn't read all of it yet. So, uh, so people are, are, are building these, these bunkers, but, you know, do you even want to live on the ground for so long? How, how much, how, how long will you live there? 
you can spend a year in it. I think after a year, you will already go nuts and you will want to go outside again. You will go outside and then what? You'll find there, you know, probably most of humanity will have starved at that point. Simply because of the energy shortages, there's not going to be food, food production and food transportation is not going to happen anymore. But then what you'll have, you'll awaken in a world either like something like Mad Max or people... Look, if you didn't have printing presses to print free money so you could bribe people into working for you, if you didn't have money or even didn't have gold, then what else do you have? Well, food. You can offer people food in exchange for their loyalty. And what else? Blood ties. This is why the, the elites of the West hate racism so much. Because in, in, a, in case of a global collapse... If people realize that they're supposed to or better off living with their own kind of people, you are going to have all sorts of tribes and ethnic tribes based on their blood relations. Those people may find also um, motivation or strength in a God, a religious system that they will embrace again so that they can survive as these ethnic groups of people who may be somewhat in conflict with one another over territory disputes and over resource disputes, but they'll survive that way. And that means the billionaire class won't be able to pay those people money anymore to do anything for them because the money won't be accepted. Do you really think that 20 years from now, people will still use the dollar and the euro and the renminbi? No, people will use chicken and eggs and butter and apples, right? Because food, like I said, food is going to be the currency of the future. And that means you need land. And the way to have land is you need your cousins and your brothers working together to defend your land for your family. Or you have an extended clan based on blood ties. I don't know how large tribes can be, but maybe you have 20,000 people or more. right? Maybe you can have half a million people like, tied together in a sort of tribal system. right? But that's how it's going to be in the future, I think. We will have... Um, a thousand little ethno states in Europe alone and elsewhere, right? That's what is really well. What I think is going to happen, you know. So these tech billionaires, they want to es they want to build a car that goes fast enough to escape from its own exhaust, right? The billionaires who are the commanders, the captains of pollution and industry and so on, they won't be able to escape the consequences of their own mass undertakings. But it's also us. It's not just the billionaires doing this. It's us working for those corporations also doing that. So we're all we're all guilty of these problems in this sense. You know? All right. The way to get your guards to exhibit loyalty in the future was to treat them like friends right now, I explained. OK, so don't just invest in ammo and electric fences. Invest in people and relationships. Right. No, no. See, this is kind of wrong. Being nice to people won't make them loyal. You have to have blood ties with them. They need to be your brother or your cousin or your father or your son. Those ties are usually what you have. That's basically it's what you will have after an apocalypse. You are not going to live together with diversity anymore. New York City will be uninhabitable for quite some time because it's a concrete zone. You know, you can't grow anything there anymore. People will move out of the cities, most of them will starve, and the remainders will become either nomadic pastoralists or they will become agriculturalists. They will settle down, they will be hunters, some will be gatherers. That's how it's going to be. And uh, these people will live as families first, families first. Then you will have the extended families, the extended clan, the tribe, right? Tribes are probably collections of clans, clans are collections of families, right? And families are literally blood relatives. And that's how it's going to be in the future, in my view. Uh, you can't buy loyalty anymore. If the global financial system collapses, there's no reason why anybody would want to work for you. You know, they could just cut your head off because there's no police anymore. There's no courts. There's no law anymore. Why, why shouldn't more aggressive people simply take over? And that's exactly what's going to happen. More aggressive or... People who care more about themselves than about others, those are going to be the survivors of this century. People low in empathy will survive. People who extend their empathy only to their blood relatives will survive. But if you're going to be one of those universalist, humanistic types, a leftist basically, and you think you can be friends with everybody, you will be the, you'll be the first who'll, to lose your head. 
All right. And so uh, they're thinking of colonizing Mars, but that's even more of a fiction. That's just total nonsense. They can't do it. Mars gravity is like one third of Earth. It means babies born there may have serious skull deformations. Uh, you might you might simply not be able to live there. All right. This article, yeah, you should read it if you want to, because it's very, very interesting. The super rich preppers planning to save themselves from the apocalypse by purging humanity. Right? Uh, let me see if I can find some sound bites and then I'll just go to your uh, to your comment section. You know? uh, the event. Yeah, so the super rich, they speak of the event by which they mean the collapse of modern society. So they actually plan for that. Imagine that all those billionaires build, building underground bunkers. They're the richest people in the world and they don't believe that our societies are going to last. This is something we need to pay attention to, you know. Uh, he had done a SWOT analysis. You know what that means? SWOT, strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. This is something you learn in business school. <laughs> strength, like, and they concluded that preparing for calamity required us to take the very same measures as trying to prevent one. Okay. I keep thinking of this phrase... Uh, coincidences are the leading cause of sudden death syndrome <laughs> all right i'm not going to read all of this that's nonsense but i'm going to here look at look at that do you see this this is an underground bunker or something a bunker complex these these fuckers think they can be able will be able to take a swim while the rest of us are starving i don't think so first thing first thing we do to these underground bunkers we stuff the air vents and we pour concrete uh into their exits and their uh, entrances these people go in there they will never come out of there never <laughs> we will bury them like the the ancient pharaohs in the valley of the kings we're going to bury the billionaires surely the billionaires who brought me out for advice on their exit strategies were aware of, of certain limitations okay right so it turns out that that here, small islands are utterly dependent on air and sea deliveries for basic staples. Solar panels and water filtration equipment needs to be replaced and serviced at regular intervals. So the billionaires who reside in such locales are more, not less, dependent on complex supply chains. See, that's amazing, right? It's that these, these billionaire people, with all their wealth and money, they are unable to figure out that you cannot survive with the help of the technology. The only way to survive is to largely abandon it and move to a... Uh, a system without electricity where everything is mechanical and you will have laborers, human labor and horses. You can have plows, right? But you will have to have, accept a very much more simplified life, a food producing estate up in the hills, up in the mountains with your mountain goats and so on. You'll have, you'll have some farmers and you'll have uh, workers and you'll have um, security staff on, at hand the best thing you could probably do is found a small town somewhere up in the mountains that is largely self-sufficient with minimal input. That's what you got to go for, minimal or zero input agriculture. There's a guy in southern Australia called Shane Simonson. He's working on this. He has a sub stack also about zero input agriculture. He's trying to figure out what crops to use and so on if you want to do that, if you want to live off the land without needing anything. Because there's one thing saying, oh, I got land. Oh, but I need fertilizer. Where are you going to get fertilizer after the apocalypse? <laughs> and you're not going to get it. Where are you going to get, you know, your seeds? You need to prepare now to have the seeds to plant. So that's probably it. Seeds and animals are probably the most important things you'll need for your survival in the future. Without seeds, you, you can't even have the plants that you need to survive. You need the seeds and you need, uh, you need to have the knowledge. You need to know how to do farming and pastoralism. So that's something you can learn up front, right? When you, if you want to be a prepper or survivalist, I think you can do that. You can now take some courses on the internet and learn about pastoralism, learn about basic agriculture, get some seed collections in that you can store so you'll have seeds to grow Otherwise, you can't do anything, you know? And then secondarily is who you're going to survive with. Family, they have to be brother, uh, blood relatives because you probably can't trust anyone else. You know, even if you don't like your family, you can probably survive with them based on the fact that you'll, you're not going to kill each other if you have a quarrel, right? 
whereas uh, although brothers do sometimes kill each other right and sisters too but that's the point uh if you were going to do this with strangers like diversity you're going to have like three black people three asian people and three white people trying to survive together uh they're going to each go go their own way <laughs> i don't think they will stay together that's not going to happen man it's just not the reason why we have diversity today i think is because we can afford to have it because there's still an economic benefit large enough to each party not to go all bonkers nuts with violence although the black lives matter movement shows that they are becoming violent so it is already breaking apart anyway it's it's going down the drain you know all right there was this one more article this is so this is the guy i've been talking about the whole time survival of the richest he has a book out called uh, escape fantasies of the tech billionaire survival of the richest douglas rushkoff professor of media theory at queens cuny new york city i suppose all right, maybe uh, don't fall for the mindset. So he's, he gives advice to the billionaires, right? Uh, the, the event, they're thinking of a crisis that destroys civilization and they see such a catastrophe as inevitable, but for a select few, survivable. I just told you that I think the same thing is going to happen, but you're not going to survive in an underground bunker that depends on maintenance and electricity. It's just not going to happen. You need a food producing estate somewhere up in the hills with mountain goats. And so instead of spending their energy trying to keep the world from crumbling, the billionaires are looking for ways to escape the disaster of their own making. All right. That's what they call the mindset. Okay. The belief that with enough money and technology, wealthy men can live as gods and transcend the calamities that befall the lesser humans. <clears throat> It's the same ludicrous thinking that you've seen among the, the Egyptian pharaohs. I've mentioned it. All right. Uh, beware of the insulation equation. The majority of humanity and nature can't be discarded like the first stage of a rocket, rocket ship. Okay, that's right. Pretty good. All right. Yeah, they all want to go into the metaverse and upload their minds. But then what, what do we do? We just pull the plug. <laughs> There's not... You know, look, if you want to think about long-term survival... Don't assume that electricity will work. There's not going to be electricity. You're going to have human labor and horses and, and so on. Beasts of burden, yes, but no electricity. Wealth erodes empathy. Studies are showing that billionaires don't identify with the pain or emotions of others, just like psychopaths, but with money. <laughs> billionaires such as psychos with money. The empathic part of their brains don't... Are they lit so the billionaire's emphatic empathic empathic parts parts of their brains don't light up when they witness another human in distress they can't read the emotional states of others or maybe they can but they really don't care i think they pretty much could feel their own children's pain so that's why i think they can do it but they just don't extend that to people outside of their immediate family it's as if they hurt their own their frontal lobes as though as though they have brain damage well this psychopaths have the same thing this could be because winning in their scheme means leaving others behind. Exactly. They're trying to leave humanity behind, but they won't be able to do that. There's going to be revenge. The extreme sort of wealth they seek, enough to have not just a super yacht, but a second yacht, right, to service the super yacht, means separating from the rest of humanity. They have the technology to fulfill this need for isolation and perpetuate the cycle of disassociation. Very interesting, very interesting. Basically, billionaires are just rich psychopaths all right embrace reality we don't have to surrender to the idea that the planet is doomed and only the wealthy will survive okay as though they think the rich will make it but the rich can't survive without the help of peasants and security staff and workers and so on it's not going to happen so we're only in a crisis all right i'm not going to read that uh all right all right, I'm going to close this screen. All right, I thought that was very interesting. Maybe I can adjust my camera a little bit. All right, put myself in the center. All right, I see there were uh, quite some people watching the stream. I will put this on my YouTube channel, at The Great Johannes. I'll type that in for you. Hold on. Oh, I have my scene here, alerts, chat box. I'll turn these things on. Here. The Great Johannes is my YouTube no channel name, my username. And let's see, where else can you go? 
you can also go to my uh, my telegram Johannes MK I have different usernames all across because uh, I got banned so often I could never really streamline my usernames anymore you know yeah if you want to financially support me a little bit you can go to my website jmk.info this is my sub stack so you can get a subscription there or you can donate more I suppose there's an option where you can donate more uh, Hindus all right let me see I'm gonna go through your comments for a little bit to see if uh, if I should respond to something or not I, I don't know uh, if it was useful or uh, I see there's a lot of people here all right Hold on. So, down your throat. Okay, best way to plan for an apocalyptic event, yeah, is to buy your own plot. Yeah, buy your own plot of land. That's what I think, yeah. People will take simply take the food away from you. No, they won't, because I just, uh, the way I explain is that in the big cities, most of them will starve, and you need to place your, uh, your, food producing estate far enough away from the big cities so that people can't reach you by the time they get there they will have starved starved already so yeah yeah it's a very extreme suggestion but that's how it would work you need to stay away from the masses of people obviously and uh, your workers will work the farm they're not going to burn set fire to the crops they're not going to kill the cattle they will want that system to work you know uh, how could people have allowed the monetary system yeah how did it happen? Well, we slowly over time, everybody was enslaved. We all became slaves to the system. Uh, I'm scratching some dirt or something. We all became slaves to the system uh, and never really, never really revolted against it. Like the same reason why, why don't horses in a horse farm revolt against the owners? Yeah, it's, it's that book Animal Farm by uh, George Orwell, right? They do revolt in the end of the movie. But maybe by the end of our timeline, we will revolt. I think we will ultimately revolt against this, you know? All right, all right. So robots will become smarter than us and gain conscious. Nah, I don't believe that. Uh, robots will run out of power long before they become conscious. All right. Yeah, you see the, the German politicians freaking out about Gigi D'Agostino's song, uh, L'Amour Toujours. It used to be my favorite when I was young, but now, now it's a right-wing song. Funny how that goes, huh? Your virus on their system, great, great to hear, man. All right. So, uh, let's get some likes. Oh, thank you very much, man. Thank you for supporting my stream. If you're always here watching, sharing, uh, uh, thank you for sharing my stream to your social media. All right. All right, all right, all, right. all religion from Babylonia, maybe, maybe not. You know? All right. All right, thank you very much so far. Uh, I did this one as a, this is like a live podcast and I sent it, I will, like I said, I will put it on my, uh, on my YouTube channel. Uh, and then uh, let's see, here we go. Okay, 45 minutes. Usually I try to do an hour, but I've been speaking for about, about 45 minutes now. So then uh, you can all, yeah, I've heard, I have heard of snooze. Yeah, I tried snooze uh, sometime here. Yeah the Swedish tobacco, but it's not, turns out it's not very good for your teeth, right? You shouldn't use it. Yeah, America for Americans, yeah. Europe for Europeans, though, to me, I wouldn't even say Europe for Europeans. I would simply, because uh, I would not mind at all moving elsewhere if we can have land there. And so the I've been talking about colonizing the subarctic region of this planet. So you have the Arctic, the North Pole, Right. And then below that, there's a whole region that is largely spruce, woodland, frozen, snowy, uh, like Siberia, for example, or like northern Scandinavia, <clears throat> like northwestern Russia. It's massive woodland. <clears throat> if the Earth's temperature were to rise for a degree or so or one and a half degrees Celsius would make a lot of those territories habitable, uh, you would be able to do uh, agriculture there and pastoralism. And you could live off that and you would have temporary at least at first you would have enough wood to build homes you will live in wooden homes and you will drink milk and eat meat and you will have uh 
you, you might not have bananas. Forget about bananas and strawberries, but you will have food. You will have honey, probably. You will have uh, those kinds of things. <clears throat> right. Yeah, thanks for watching, yeah? Thanks for liking my content. So I think that's why I wouldn't even say Europe or Europeans because that means you, you imply you have an army available to drive out all the foreigners. Wouldn't it be easier if groups of nationalist Europeans who have had enough of diversity for us to find new frontiers to colonize and live there. And there is such a frontier. That's the subarctic region, the woodlands. You could do it in the future, in the near future. And that's why I, I think more in terms of, uh, yeah, stay together, stay together, live together, move together. Like we could be a nation that is on the move. It doesn't have to have a certain territory. Uh, the Netherlands today is such a concrete construction pit, really. It's, it's going to be, they're going to re reorganize all of the Netherlands because that's what they do when, when organizations grow and they feel that they're not growing anymore, they're going to reorganize, right? And so they're going to reorganize the whole uh, landscape of the Netherlands, turn it into the tri-state city. Uh, and it's just so ludicrous because what will be the result of that? What will be the result of it is that you're going to spend a gazillion trillion euros on reorganizing the Netherlands and the net effect will be that it will all be kind of the same again. And when people wake up to that, that after all, it's like during COVID, you know what the old people did during COVID in the Netherlands? They went to these, uh, they started working in their, their backyards. They started renovating their backyards and their front yards believe it or not, like they had nothing better to do. Like, I don't know, you could have helped your kids have homes or something. No, you had to like spend all your money on renovating your backyard. And then by the time you're done renovating the backyard, then what happens? Nothing. It's all the same again. You didn't improve anything. It's all the same, you know? All right, I'm going to clock out, log off, because, uh, you know, I'm, I run out of things to say than I usually, I know, I learned from experience that it's better to then stop and then just speak more another time. Uh, like I said, you can go to my website, uh, www.jmk.info. That's my sub stack. You can get a subscription there if you want to or donate. And then there's my uh, my YouTube channel, at the great Johannes. And my Twitter account is JohannesMKX. I'll type it out, JohannesMKX. This is my Twitter. And, uh, well, good luck to you. Uh, have a nice evening wherever you are. And, uh,